is like that overview oh, you know, as a recap of last week. Um, you know, we went up and played UAB, uh, which is a, um, a team in the FBS. Uh, was real impressed with how the guys played and played from uh, start to finish. Uh, we got out with, with minor injuries, but uh, I think, you know, we had our opportunities to pull the game out for whatever reason, or play here, play there. Uh, they made more than us and was able to, uh, uh, to secure the win. Uh, you know, we, you know, uh, we learned a lot from that particular game of going against the uh, Conference USA champions. Uh, they did a lot of things well. And I, I thought that uh, we uh, slowed them down on their offensive side. I think Coach Pearson did a great job of, of stuffing the run. Uh, they had one or two passes to get behind us, but the young man was in great position with some great throw and catch. Uh, offensively, I thought Coach Blackwell did a good job of getting the uh, ball in our playmakers' hands. Uh, Darian Bell did a great job uh, in the run game. More importantly, the offensive line did a great job of uh, taking the Alton Trophy uh, prospect and uh, putting them in a position where he only had two or three uh, defensive plays uh, collectively. Uh, special teams, when you go back and look at it, uh, you know, you take away that 10 points that we gave up in special teams is a whole different ball game. Uh, you know, we can't allow, and, and as we tried to stress all week, big returns in the kicking game. And uh, unfortunately, we had a kickoff to go back to the house, and uh, that game ended up being a deciding factor. But again, we looked at it, made the adjustments, and uh, we'll uh, put those things uh, behind us and move forward to Tuskegee. Uh, Tuskegee, uh, uh, Coach Slater has done a remarkable job with that program for uh, more than almost two decades. And you can look at the uh, talent that they have, and we know that they're going to be hungry as they come up here, as they always been, and play above their heads. And we, you know, we definitely expect that. Uh, you know, they play at the quarterback play. They have a two-headed monster. They're a kid that can run well and also a kid that can throw well. Uh, they have a, a grandson who's a speedy to receiver, and uh, you know, he, he does a great job of, of getting over top of coverage. So we have to uh, make some adjustments and, and contain him as well. So. We, we expect them a dogfight, and, and uh, we're expecting the, the home crowd to get out and give us all the support uh, that we need to try to you know, go ahead and be victorious. Coach, what, what are some things you all did last week um, against UAB, a team that won 11 games last year, um, that you expect to build on this week going into uh, Tuskegee? Well, the thing about it, you know, you go into a game like that, the very first game, um, you know, I, I thought for the most part we protected the football. We had a fumble uh, turnover in the, in the, uh, with the punt return. The quarterback on the last drive uh, had an interception. But the key was is that we didn't just uh, turn the ball over. Um, and then um, secondly, as, as you look at the UAB game, uh, the penalties, we only had six penalties. So that means guys are really understanding the information that they're getting. That means the fundamentals are in place. Uh, so they're able to execute more. If you look back at last uh, year's first game, we had almost 14 penalties. And uh, a lot of it was delay of game. Guys uh, hold and things of that nature. So you can always measure or use it as a barometer for your team on how well they're going to play the second game by what they did in the first game. And every coach will always tell you the biggest margin of improvement is between the first and second game. This was a team last year. Um, <clears throat> I kind of struggled to get the run game going. Um, only had two hundred yard performances a year ago, um, but with, with Bell exploding on ten carries uh, <laughs> above ten yards a clip, what, what kind of what kind of dynamic does he provide to that offense? Um, speaking on like big playability and things of that nature. Anytime you get a guy running four two doing anything, you got a, a pretty good player, uh, and then having Ezra Gray as well to support them up at four, three, uh, sub four, 40 uh, guys. But more importantly, the offensive line, everything starts with those guys up front. Uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, when you look at outcomes, the first thing they say, oh, the guys, they didn't do their job. But when you look back over and make an assessment over the whole season, the schematics of the things that we were doing didn't match our kids. Not everybody can run zone. So don't put them in a position to run zone. So we made assessments to collectively make our offense better by personnel in the helmet and personnel coaching the helmet. Charles, I know we don't deal in moral victories back in the day. I know we don't deal in moral victories in college football. Uh, 
But what can you take away from last week that you can say, yeah, we came out that, that gives us confidence going into this week against us either? Well, you, you take on Conference USA you, uh, champions. You go in a 45-point underdog, and you can show the team three plays that might have been called or wasn't called that is a whole different ball game. And then you can show them uh, three plays that's within our control that we could have made and changed the ball game. Uh, you know, I, I'm quite sure that, um, you know, that they don't feel the same way that they feel when they was coming out that tunnel. <laughs> I, I'm quite sure they feel a little different about Alabama State uh, when it comes down to the league. You got another game on ESPN. You played on ESPN last week. Just talk about being able to be on the national stage and how does that help with recruiting and the program as a whole? Anytime you can get in that amount of households uh, and, and to add visibility to your program, to be able to, after the game, you had uh, student athletes from all around the country. Uh, we saw you on, uh, on ESPN, Coach, we want to visit, we want to come be a part of what, uh, what you guys are doing. So, I mean, you can't, I mean, that's priceless to be able to get into millions of households, and uh, especially in this region that we in, you know, a lot of times you gotta be coming to Montgomery to find Alabama State, but now when you're out and you can reach as far as California and overseas, you can't pay for that. Coach, to piggyback on that, we know HBCU football doesn't typically get the love that it probably deserves, or just HBCU sports as a whole, but with this game being actually televised and the history that goes behind it, what, is this, what does this game mean for the representation of HBC football and sports nationally? Well, one of the things is that, you know, uh, for years we always at HBCUs have to prove uh, our existence and more importantly pr uh, prove the fact that we can coach and that we can play football. And, and I think a lot of times when you have a first round draft choice like Titus Howell, he didn't come here and just wake, go to sleep and wake up and end up in the first round. He had to be nurtured, so that meant the nutrition was in the right place. That meant the resources was in the right place. That meant the coaching was in the right place. So a lot of those things uh, get overlooked when you look at the HBCUs. Being able to put the games on those kind of platforms like ESPN, it gives us an opportunity for our young men to, uh, to have that same experience that they have at the P PWIs. But more importantly, it gives uh, folks at home a chance to look and see what the brand of games that we have. And I'm not just talking about on the field. When you see the band, uh, with over 200 pieces in, a, in, a, in the stands, uh, and the, you're able to get the whole cultural experience of what we do at HBCUs is different from anywhere else in the country. Coach, you nearly pulled out a win against UAB, who's an FBS opponent. Um, you play a Division two opponent this week. How much pressure do you feel to go out and really just dominate this team? You know what? We've been hearing about, you can play 11 games and you go hear about Tuskegee. Um, and quite naturally so, they're close in proximities. Uh, this game has been going on between the two, this rivalry over 100 years. When you're going against a Division II, they, as I said before, they're gonna come in with the same energy that we went into UAB. A lot of those young men were either recruited or, or didn't recruit, and they wanna come in and pro, prove that they can play at this level. And uh, the coaches want to come in and prove that they can coach at this level and they can do better than we can, uh, that we have and can with, with limited resources. We just got to eliminate all that other stuff and just whatever happens on that field and whoever they send out on that field, we just got to go out and play our game of football. Coach, we, we know how special this rivalry is and how the history of it and what it means to this city, what it means to this town, what it means for families. Um, with that being said, what, what does it mean to you, like simply put, like how special is this week? Does it change your preparation? Does it change the field? Uh, what does this game mean? Well, again, it's, it's recruiting. Uh, the same way we went and played U, UAB, we all recruit the same young men. So it's about recruiting. It's about validation. Uh, it's about making sure that we don't have a, a letdown. We can't play UAB up here and play Tuskegee here. That's not going to happen. We gonna play Tuskegee just like they the Giants. Uh, we don't care what division they are, uh, whether they won two or three. We gonna play eleven guys on that field like they at the University of Alabama. Uh, Coach, with that being said, who, who are some guys that we should be watching either on your side or Tuskegee or Tuskegee side? Who are some guys that you 
that, that, that I should be on the whole game. When you're going against these kind of rivalry guys, look in the trenches. When you play in a rivalry game, it's the guys in the trenches. If, if, if we can block them up front, we'll have success. If they can block us up front, they have success. So it's not so much about the skill guys. It's that, it's that defensive front and that offensive front. So I lead with Brown, Carl, Carl Thompson's uh, pancake. Uh, you know, the guys that we have up front, those are the guys that you need to watch. Coach, going into this game, how, do you, uh, how are you going to prepare for a two-quarterback offense? What do you do to get your guys prepared to see two different guys doing two different, totally different things? Uh, same thing we do in practice. We wrap a bunch of quarterbacks trying to find the right one to, to lead us. So if he's a runner, we'll find ways to contain him and make sure that we're not giving him, uh, you know, uh, back ends that, that's bare. If he's a thrower, uh, we'll make sure that we put guys in space to, to uh, extra guys in coverage to try to uh, negate some of his passing lines. To pick back on that, we know the position of quarterback is a, is a flow position. Like it's about building drives and flow. And so sometimes we see teams struggle when they're flip-flopping, going back and forth. What are some things you all are going to try to institute on defense to kind of disrupt that flow? Yeah, you'll see, sorry. That. <laughs> no, it's too, too much in the scouting report right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you'll see, sorry. Uh, what do you take away from last year's game, uh, obviously, from the buildup on the field? What do you take away from that that you'll maybe use differently this year? Well, one is that, you know, we can't go in a game and play from behind. Uh, you know, Tuskegee jumped out on us 13 nothing, And uh, when you get in a, a game like that, you know, whether it was miscues here, miscues there, uh, we can't play this game from behind. Um, more importantly, we know that they're going to play down to the last single play. Um, when you look out on, I mean, on that field, we won the game in overtime on the last uh, on the last play. Uh, so we have to be prepared for a fight. You know what I mean? And, and uh, eliminate the penalties. I think last year we had 130 yards in penalties. Uh, you know, again, the first game to the second game, we have to use everything that we had from UAB to the to our advantage, being that they hadn't played a game. So we should be a little bit more crisp with what we're doing uh, on the field. Coach, what do you think some of those advantages are, having that, that, that y'all have a game under your belt? Because, you know, a lot of times first game working out the kinks. Uh, expectation, knowing what we like on in certain situations, first down, second down, personnel, uh, who, you know, who, who's ex, you know, expected to be in certain areas on certain plays. So those kind of things uh, within the environment. And then being in an environment of, 30,000 plus people. It's going to be packed to the rack again. Uh, and we played UAB, it was uh, 40,000 people. And it was just good to, to look at the last second tick off the clock. And we had over 20, 30, 30,000 Alabama State fans still sitting in this seat. So that, that tells you that the support is coming back in the right place. Hi, Alex. Hi, Cole. You got one? Yeah, oh, here I just got one. Got all about your apparel, you know, you found you got the rip your jerseys in, so you're not wearing all white this year. What what are y'all gonna be decked out in? We looked good the... last week, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. yeah. AD got us straight with that Adidas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we we'll, we'll still be wearing the Adidas apparel, and um, and you know, like I said, again, all that stuff from playing it on major stage to wearing uh, you know apparel that they see on uh, on the major colleges, it's a sense of of you know of comfort of um, they appreciate they appreciate us so uh, you know and that helps these young men and, uh, and it helps us to look good you play good so we'll be ready to go. Coach, what, what uniform combo though? I think I was just trying to use yeah. touch on. I don't even pick out those guys. I tell you, I don't do helmets. I don't do none of that other stuff. So whatever those captains come up with, they pick it. They pick it out. They hang it up and they wear it. You know what I mean? Because I always tell them, you know, if you want to look good and play good, but I don't get into who wear what numbers. And, just fight. Just with, if you got a T-shirt on with ASU on it, just fight. Well, we uh, we're excited about being here. Uh, excited about the game coming up, and uh, we definitely have a, a great opponent. And uh, hopefully, we can uh, give them a good game.
guys, when you ask a question, some of you may be new to Coach Slater, please introduce yourself, say anything. Coach Slater, Auditorium, Montgomery Enterprise. We have time, excuse me. Um, that being said, uh, to, to <laughs> I was just talking to Coach Ely about the importance of this game, um, what it means, not just on the gridiron, but beyond as far as bringing community together. And we know that this game stretches the family lineage and things of that nature. Regardless of if it's on Labor Day or Turkey Day, what, what does this game mean to you and your staff on the field and beyond? Or, and your team, excuse me. Well, it's, it's a big game. Um, honestly, as a, as a staff, we just try to take it one game at a time. And uh, of course, this is the most important game for us right now because it's a, it is our first game. So uh, I think it means a lot to our players to play well. Uh, I thought we played well last year. And uh, of course, obviously, uh, Alabama State played better than we did, so uh, it's a big game. Coach, ASU already have one game under their belt, so, and you guys just stepping on the field. I know that first game, that's a game that you guys be able to work and get the kinks out. Just talk about being able, well, this is being your first game and they already have a game under their belt. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that's an advantage to uh, to have a game under your belt. I'm, I'm a firm believer that uh, you get better, you improve more after your first game than you'll improve the, the rest of the year. So they have that uh, that game where they can go back and say, okay, we should be doing it like this. And then some guys, you know, especially the new guys, don't believe in what you're doing a lot of times, then you get to show them where if you do it like I teach it, then it's a better way and all that stuff. So I think they definitely have an advantage in in that area, uh, which makes it makes it tougher for us. We got we got to try to be the best we can be, but we know we're gonna make mistakes. And, uh, hopefully, we can overcome. Coach, do you think are there any advantages for you all, considering being fresh and healthy, not having played a game? There's two sides to it. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't see <laughs> how we have an advantage, uh, and I guess I don't want to even go there because uh, we can't look at it that way. We just, we just got to get ready to play the best we can play. That being said, what are some things or areas of emphasis that you all want to focus on coming off of last year's game? Um, maybe some areas that uh, you feel like y'all executed well enough in that you would like to see your team excel in? Um, well, we, had, we had one of those years last year. I, I think the first game contributed to it. But uh, last year was last year. He has a different coaching staff. Uh, it's a different team. And they are a very good team. I know that. But uh, we have our work cut out for us. Uh, just to keep them getting embarrassed. Coach, have you, have you seen the progression that you want to see from your team from the day they set foot on the, for fall camp to, to this week? Have you kind of seen a progression? Well, we've progressed. You don't, I guess you don't ever progress like the coach wants you to progress. But uh, I think we've gotten better. We had one strategy, the first strategy, and then there's a big difference between the first strategy and the second strategy. So uh, I guess I'm pleased in, in that respect, but I don't think we at this point, we're not uh, we're not good enough to to compete like we're gonna need to compete out there Saturday. With Alabama State being a Division One school and Tuskegee being a Division Two school, just talk about how much playing a a, a division helps you progress uh, throughout the season. Well, I guess people need to understand what you mean when you say Division One and Division Two. Uh, the thing that makes us different is Alabama State has 63 scholarships. We have 36 scholarships. That's the only difference. Uh, we get good players, but we, we're not able to get as many. <laughs> and that's the difference. The difference, I thought the difference in the game last year was uh, depth. Uh, they, they just have more depth than we do because they have more scholarships than we do. Coach, who are some guys um, on your side to start 
Um, and then on ASU side that, you know, we should keep our eyes on or, or, or be ready to watch as far as matchups and things like that. Well, on the ASU side, I mean, they have a number three that can run real fast. <laughs> That's something you can't teach. But if you can't catch it, you can't hit it either. So uh, that's a big concern for us. Uh, on our side, I'd rather wait and see. How important is it for your fans to come down and, and feel the house as well as, you know, you know ASU fans are going to be in here live and direct, but how big is it for Tuskegee fans to come and support the team as well? Well, I think the players on both sides respond to fans. Uh, the more fans you got, the harder they're going to play. So we're encouraging all of our Tuskegee fans to come on out and support us, as well as Alabama State fans come on out and support because uh, you get a, a better product out of your players. Coach, I was going to say, you know, we know you got the two quarterback system going on. Um, and we, you know, Darren's coming off of the MVP year and a great stretch of the year um, after the, the injury to your, your initial starter. What kind of expectations do you have for, for him? Um, and then how, how is that position going to kind of work out for you all? I hope this is going to work out good. We have two experienced quarterbacks, but you can't play one at a time. So uh, we'll play one of them. And then hopefully we'll play the other ones. <laughs> There has been a lot of joint events between ASU and Tuskegee this week. There's a joint, this is a joint press conference today. Just talk about how big is it for HBCUs to come together as a family in these big stage games and things of that nature. Yeah, this, I think it's important. Uh, and it's great to see the camaraderie, even though, you know, they go after each other all the time. Even back when I was in high school, we had, we had our ag teacher was an Alabama State guy. I mean, our ag teacher was a, a Tuskegee guy, and our history teacher was an Alabama State person. And uh, boy, they used to go at it all the time. I didn't even understand. <laughs> but uh, I've learned that uh, it was Alabama State and Tuskegee. So. But it's a, it's a wonderful rivalry, and uh, it's a loving rivalry because I have folks in my family, you know, I have Alabama State people and I have Tuskegee people, but we still love each other. And I think that's the same thing here. We, we are all in one common goal, and that is to uh, read young, well, raise young men and women to go out and be successful in this world. And uh, we have a great opportunity to do that. That's why I love being at Tuskegee so much. Tuskegee doesn't get to play on ESPN too often. Well, this game is going to be on ESPN this week. Just talk about how that's going to help with recruiting and, and, and helps with HBCUs like recruiting as a whole. Well, I, I disagree with you. We play on ESPN a lot. We play on it two or three times a year. So uh, that's nothing that we're not used to doing. Coach, I just wondered, I know you like to play some tennis from time to time. Do you have much time during the week of Labor Day class to fit in any, any matches? <laughs> I haven't had as much this year. Uh, I guess simply because the, of the athletic director's area. Boy, it's taking away my time. And, uh, you can tell by looking at my stomach, I need to be running a little bit more.